The greatest motivator, Mr. Mason, playing time. Or the bench. <laughs> Sloan gets the hand in there, does a nice job of covering up in the backcourt. Mitchell with a smart play, though, by not trying to stand up or would have been called for traveling. Yep. Stayed on his knees, so he couldn't pass it, so called the timeout. Kentucky's been whistled for just one foul. Central Michigan six. That's not any sort of home court deal. That's just the way that the Chippewas play defense. And as you mentioned, their opponents get to the line a lot more than they do. And that is a pretty drive by Robbie Harmon. Patterson. Strong to the glass and another nice feed from Ligon. And you can see how much more success Kentucky has when they're playing that open court, not allowing the Chippewas to get in the half court set defensively. Allen was pushed and let's see who they get. They're going to get Josh Harrelson for the call. For Central Michigan, number 40, Marcus Vance Kentucky again running the floor. Liggins is throwing the right down the pipe to Patrick Patterson, and he obviously knows what to do with it. Coming off that 27 and 14 game last time out. And there's Sloan again as he creates another turnover. Back to man to man defense for Central Michigan. Trying to post Patrick Patterson a high low look. Nice call, coach. Nice feed and a nice bucket by Patterson. That time it was Harrelson with the look inside. If Kentucky can be patient offensively, they should be able to get that look. Now, had the Chippewas had their two players out in the game that are injured, one seven foot two and one six eight, might have been a different story. Off the bounce. Shot goes in and out for Harmon. And Patterson with a rebound. Liggins open for the three. And Harrelson with a nice job as he pulls down the board. Wildcats starting to play with a little bit more rhythm, doing a better job getting some stops on the defensive end, kind of flowing right into the offense. Jacoby Harmon, Hardiman, Jacoby Hardiman, checking back into the lineup, replacing Bitzer for Central Michigan. And Adrian Hunter, a 5'11 freshman from Flint, Michigan, set to check in at the next dead ball. As Harrelson gets the free throw after the rebound, Harrelson now with 16 rebounds in his last five games and 12 of those from the defensive end. Offensively, you know, he can score some points. Uh, for Josh, it's a matter of doing things defensively and rebounding while he's in the game. With Perry Stevenson a break, or actually to take some of his playing time. There you hear the round of applause. Landon Sloan goes to the bench. Michael Porter checks back in. And the crowd comes to its feet for the freshman from Paintsville. As the Harrelson free throws have tied this game up for the second time. The Cats have only had one lead at two to nothing. Central Michigan is led by as many as nine. There's Hunter. And he loses the handle. They say it goes off the hands of Jody Meeks. And Kentucky's defense intensity obviously has picked up, and that's really what's been the difference where they got back out of that hole that they dug for themselves early in the game. Allen triggers the inbounds for the Chippewas. And he's got trouble. And there's the five count. Allen really didn't recognize that he could have thrown it in the backcourt and just let his teammate run after it. Kind of hesitant to throw it back there. Fourth turnover against Central Michigan. And immediately Jordan Bitzer checks back in as he gives Jeremy Allen a rest. Back to the 1 2 2 zone, kind of matching up out of it. Change of defense is every time down, Kyle. Yep. 
as you mentioned, while not big, as Liggins does a nice job. He stepped in that gap that you talked about, and even better than that, he finished. Yeah, that's, that's the way you attack the zone. Go into the gap and read what you have there. If they don't guard you, take it all the way. If they do, kick it. Someone should be wide open. And interesting. Central Michigan said they have uh, 30 set plays in their offensive book. Since that nine-point lead, Kentucky on a 13-2 run over the last three and a half minutes. And that shot won't fall. But Central Michigan stays with the board. And Marcus Van will go to the free throw line. Here's the last possession by the Wildcats against that zone. Attacks right in the middle, kind of slides to his left, and is able to knock it off the board straight away. And showing good agility there, jumping over the player laying on the floor. Kentucky has to do a better job rebounding, though. Central Michigan not known as a good rebounding team, but that time getting a second and third attempt before Van draws the foul. After coming off the bench in his first two games, Van has now started his last four. As you see, Perry Stevenson checked back into the game. Josh Harrelson goes to the bench. Van, a 6'7", 220-pound senior out of Chicago via Wabash Valley Community College. And he gets them both, and we're tied for the third time. Porter wide open. Can't get it to go. And the Chippewas will take over. As they said, it went off the hands of Patrick Patterson. Billy Gillespie rocks back and forth. As his team has gone back and forth with Central Michigan. There's Van being checked by Patterson. And Van with the move. And Perry Stevenson says no. And it's a real good feeling when you're a perimeter defender, even Patrick Patterson there, knowing you can really get your body on the offensive player, having Perry Stevenson behind you, that if you do get beat, he's there to swat the ball away. Really can extend over a little bit more and feel even comfortable, maybe out of a normal comfort zone, knowing that you've got help behind you. Stevenson now with 42 blocks on the season. And that time, Harmon got in a world of hurt. And the ball goes off his leg. And that will send us to the under eight minute media timeout. Surprise, surprise, Kentucky and CMU all even. UK Hoops fans, we've got UK women's basketball action coming your way on the Big Blue Sports Network and Fox Sports on January the 11th. The Arkansas Lady Razorbacks come to Lexington for a game at Memorial Coliseum. Join Gary Gupton, Christy Thomas, and Carl Nathy for all the action. Check your local listings for the time and station in your area. Kentucky and Central Michigan. You see all those banners hanging high above Rupp Arena representing the Cats championships, but they have not phased the Chippewas, who've come in here and have enjoyed as much as a nine-point first-half lead and are all tied with the Cats at 19. Meeks gets it to go off the glass as he gets his first two of the night. And good recognition by Jody Meeks, feeling that pressure, knowing that he's got to do some things going towards the basket to uh, back the defense off a little bit. Whistle, and a foul goes against Michael Porter. And Kentucky has had a most up and down shooting night. They hit their first field goal, then they missed eight in a row, and now they've hit five of their last seven. Kevin Kidd working those numbers tonight. Nice feed inside. Pitzer got it down there, but I believe it was Hardiman who couldn't control. I think Liggins came in uh, from behind and knocked it away. There's Pitzer, and he can't get that one to go, and Meeks with a rebound. Open three, but cross-court it and got Porter a little better look. And my
Michael Porter knocks down the three. Yeah, and even though the ball didn't go inside to Patrick Patterson, it was still an inside out attack created by that uh, penetration by DeAndre Liggins to get that wide open look when he threw it cross court. Ernie Ziegler immediately calls a 30 second timeout.